Australia the underdogs are pitted against the might of the world champions, Argentina. A game in which some critics marked as Australia's demise. But it was to be one of the biggest upsets of the tournament, with the young men in the green and gold fighting like true champions. In a couple of hours time. Well, as soon as we walked into the ground against Argentina, we just walked in and apparently the crowd decided us and the whole crowd just raised their feet and started applauding. Now, I think it was me and David Mitchell just walked in the ground first and the players followed. And we started to look around now who, who the hell came in the ground, you know, because we've never received a reception like that before. Argentina are world champions and anyone that's a champion and you are regarded as a nobody, well naturally you sort of you, you feel a bit inferior to start off with. Already has dropped out and Martino and Tapia are in there. This is Cordigio, the left back. Ripping his way through. Cordigio is still going. Here. Somebody's going down the left. It's in Cantalupo. It's the ball he needs on the left foot. If it's in early, there's a chance. The goalkeeper was struggling desperately as that scooped and skimped off the bar. That was a great move by Australia and the nice ball from Mitchell to put in Cantalupo onto his good left foot. The goalkeeper was nowhere for this and only inches away from the first goal. given it didn't really look like a penalty to me but uh, I was too far away to make a decision but uh, when the penalty went in I thought hello here it goes again because played a lot of international games in Israel played teams like Israel Greece Romania we virtually matched them in everything except for scoring goals once the ball went in we one nil down I thought hello you know we've been unlucky again and a penalty for Argentina a very harsh penalty Jerry which is going to be taken That actually, Jerry, very harsh penalty. And here's the substitution for Australia. Ian Hunter coming on, coming off, number 11. Just sitting on the bench watching the players who really got stuck into Argentina, they were going all out. I was just so keyed up. I, I reckon I could have ran through a brick wall just to go out and be part of them. Hunter, a very good lead. Trudenic on the ball, and there goes Giovanni. And he was well beaten in the air, but again, over the top, Hunter, a very good lead. Blair is up there over the far side. Certainly another pushing and shoving there. Oh, Kusas has put it in. Kusas has scored just at the time he was about to be substituted. Pleased to have a draw actually. Uh, I thought what a great result for Australia it was. And uh, with about a minute and a half to go, uh, all of a sudden a ball just came to me and I just actually put up the bomb, as the boys say, and uh, just to waste time hoping a ball will stay in the air long enough. And David Mitchell said after it, and I was fairly deep at the time, and I thought I'll go up and try and support Mitch. And uh, he got the better of the two Argentinian defenders, and I thought he was going to shoot. 
and I was coming inside and I had a bit of space there. And I thought to myself, Mitch, don't shoot, I'm nearly there. And I called out Mitch and he made a perfect ball off. It was a, a beautiful ball. I just sort of kicked it into the back of the net. Hunter being mobbed by the crowd is surely telling him, get off, please, because otherwise you could ruin the whole occasion. What a great scoreline. 2-1, Australia over Argentina. John, I was at the Hindmarsh Stadium in Adelaide when that news crept through and there was just so much jubilation that I envied you being at the Sydney Sports Ground. What was the feeling like? Well, I think the whole crowd, it was just quite, uh, quite incredible as witnessed by the scenes uh, after the game. But here was a game, first game, taking on the world champions uh, of senior football and of junior football. Uh, no one gave uh, Australia a chance except perhaps the boys themselves. They were behind to a very a criminal penalty, if you like. Uh, it was never a penalty. They were still able to pick themselves up and uh, win the game 2-1. Uh, apart from the penalty, they, they were never under threat and it was a thoroughly deserved win. John, what about those opening scenes when the team came into the stadium? We've seen this year, particularly uh, at the Sydney Cricket Ground, when Australian senior team was beaten by New Zealand, where they were booed and jeered off the field. What a wonderful moment. Finally, a breakthrough as far as recognition of national pride with Australian football. Yeah, well, I think uh, the crowd, the supporters of soccer, really sensed that this was the chance, you know, again, to, to come back to our original statement, to restore credibility. And they, they, they set the atmosphere for the performance of the whole Australian team by their support before the game. And uh, the young players themselves have said how much that contributed towards the little bit extra that they had to give. So the question, proud to be Australian, the answer is yes as Australia won that first game against Argentina. The other teams in Australia are on the move for the second round in Newcastle, and we'll be moving with them right after this break. After that exhilarating win over Argentina was certainly on a high, but they had to move to Newcastle on a public holiday to meet the Cameroons. So the man to receive the throw was Fabio in Cantalupo. He's from the Juventus Club in Melbourne. But it draws a round of, round of applause from this excellent crowd at the Newcastle International Sports Centre. Here it comes again in replay, and it appeared that this was Howard Sidinic, the man that came forward. Chris is turning, but he shot past that near post. So the smallest man in the Australian side, Paul Kay, knocking it out of the right for Wheatley. And now Grant Lee plays down quickly by the Cameroon midfield. This is a great left foot. The target man, the shot. Yes, Australia! David Mitchell scores for Australia. And they lead by one goal to nil. And the man that was beaten was Pierre Yombo. And look at this great left foot shot. Ball coming from Trevinic. David Mitchell does really well here. He brings it down on his chest, lets it bounce, and he has a first time shot to the corner of the net. And here it comes from behind the goal. This is a beautiful ball from Trudinic. Lovely. Floats it in there perfectly. And there's Mitchell supplying the finishing touch. The ball curving inside that near post. Great control. And so Australia lead. Cameroon by one goal to nil. And there's the man that put Australia in the lead. There's Wheatley. Knocking it back for goalkeeper Ahern, who just manages to save the corner. And it's an interesting background of Glenn Ahern, in fact was a rugby league convert from Queensland. And after earning a full Australian cap away in the last two matches of the World Cup elimination matches in Indonesia and Taiwan, I'm sure he's very glad that he made that transition from rugby league. He's now representing his country not only at A-level but also in this World Youth Championship. See, Glenn Ahern is virtually impeded there as his view of the ball, but the ball sneaking inside the far post. And so Cameroon pull one back through the goal by Ole Ole. That's great play. Ole Ole makes it number two. In fact, it's John Kep. The Cameroon striker. 
and Chi Yong Kip puts Cameroon in the lead by two goals to one, and here's how it happens. He was put in space on the right, Ahern was off his line, despite the attempt of Stephen Blair to cut it out. It's in the back of the net, and Cameroon lead Australia by two goals to one. And here we have it. Cross ball, switches play again, to get caught out in the forward uh, position. Glenn Ahern comes out from his goal, and the boy does, does well to stick it in the same corner as the first goal. Kusis was there again, but cleared away by the Cameroon defence. Wheatley loses possession. Sardinic across to the left-hand side. Now Cameroon in towards that area. Ahern's committed himself. Goal number three. Scored by Ibongi. In fact, by Yong Kep again. Yong Kep scores his second goal. And look at the jubilation of the Cameroons. In the front there. What's the tackle there? Is it held to Dank? And it's the quick breakaway we found there. We've got three men against one there. And the finishing here of Yongchep scores his second goal. And Australia trail by three goals to one. again he's into the area cuts it back and the bongi couldn't supply the finishing touch but there's no doubting the skill of this big forward line they're not only fast they're not only powerful but they certainly can show the australian defense that they can control the ball as well look at the way that young chef cuts it back the bongi arrived but couldn't bring it under control and now Cameroon trying to break again. But Roscopoulos takes over in midfield. On the left-hand side now is Homer. Patikas, his shot is wide. Patikas on the field for Encantalupo. I didn't see that substitution made earlier. Chidinic has he got the pace, look at the pace of Ibongi, tremendous pace, and that really put pressure on Howard Chidinic. And now Australia again, back over halfway, chips it on for Kousas. Kousas oh. makes his man. It's a penalty. The referee has pointed to the spot. This will be interesting to watch it in replay. Just where is Mark Cousas? Well, that's one you could dispute. In my opinion, he was outside the area. Mark Cousas on the spot for Australia. This will make it 3-3. And that's one that they'll talk about for a while. That's it. So Australia pull one back. Mark Cousas scores from the spot. So the scores come back level 3-3. Three, three. And we've got around about 11 minutes of play remaining in the second half. And here's how Marcusis brings the scores back level in the 34th minute of the second half. Well, Johnny, the championship only three days old, already controversy, but it was great to see that fighting spirit by the young Australians again. Well, tremendous fighting spirit, the ability also to score goals, which the Australian team has been uh, criticised for, but also tremendous uh, psychological approach to the game because they were on a, a high after beating the world champions. The whole World Cup build-up was to the first game against the world champions. They've beaten them and now two days later they've got to take the less fancied Cameroon side. And I think it was a credit to the Australians psychologically that they were able to get such, to me, was their best result against Cameroon. In well, there's still plenty of exciting... I think where England's concerned and Australians, I don't think there's any, d any danger to the coach to build these players up uh, uh, big enough. Uh, but most of my 
non-soccer mates uh, always say that soccer will really come of age in Australia when we can play England at soccer and beat them. And he was the, probably the first opportunity. Well, it certainly was. And the action was from the Sydney Sports Ground, Australia versus England. Lee, um, Mitchell rather looping there, being fouled by Robson. The Romanian referee standing no nonsense early on. Let's see what we've got here. We've got Kruno and Raskopoulos. Play behind them. Here's Raskopoulos. Good drive. Oh, he rattled it against the bar. Raskopoulos desperately unlucky. He gets a shoulder in there as England get it away in some urgency and despair. Good challenge there, though, by Pete. And cleared into touch by. The man brought up in rugby league circles, uh, Bruno Hearn. That was a marvellous free kick by Peter Raskopoulos, and the goalkeeper, in these lights, didn't see it. The ball was pushed along that touchline. All over back by by Ellen Bruno on the play is allowed to go on because Australia in possession in a good position. Kusas a good turn. Kusas a good goal. Mark Kusas. Goalkeeper left his near post unprotected. That's a lovely turn by the Australian's leading scorer. This fella's really got a touch for the goal here. Beautiful turn. Leaves Bamford for dead and a wonderful drive. An early goal for Australia. A terrific boost from Mark Kusas after Incantalupo was fouled, but the referee sensibly allowing play to go on. Good refereeing there, John. Yes, good refereeing, but fantastic skills from Mark Kusas. A really well-cast goal, and that's got the Australians really going now. An ideal time to get a goal. Kusas has backed off into the area. Trudinic, can he get down the line? Trudinic still with a chance of getting a cross in. Oh, that's a beautiful cross, and that goes Tendall. Oh, the lights were a great problem to the goalkeeper there. So, too, was a very, very physical challenge of Mitchell, and Kendall is in trouble, in some trouble. Peter! Finney going to hope for one in the small. Thundered away. He's not doing well at the moment, with Wallace trying to keep possession, but heavily outnumbered so still this battle for domination outside the Australian penalty area goes on with England having their best spell of the game at the moment as Phil Crosby with a lot of room looks to knock the big one in for Small to get up now Webb might drive one and doesn't get it through the record players but Greenall going in there hard, surely being held off by Kusas, but Greenall now goes for the return, and really a tremendous burst here by Kay. Neil Webb comes over to take this one. The long throw, and Small's got to get himself quickly into the penalty area if he's going to be of any use, but it's Pete coming to it. Good cross. Hits the referee. And Michael Small almost had a fortunate rebound there. Mr. Igner could have made himself fairly unpopular. Had that uh, dropped into the path of Michael Small a little bit more comfortably. Pete. Good cross, but goalkeeper should have it, but he was in. A couple of minds, and that was coming straight out of the lights. Pete. Although in normal circumstances that wouldn't be called a decent cross at all. The goalkeeper was in some trouble. And a corner. Again with the ball to be put into the middle by Peak. Deflected away. Helped on by Kay. And Banfield humps it back again. Oh, the miss there by Blair. Wallace couldn't get it. And the powerful figure of Mitchell. 
And what a run by Patikas here. And it's in with a chance now for a second. Oh, it should have been in the back of the net there by Shea. That was a straight line break from Mitchell and Patikas and Kay. And it should have been in, John. Yes, fine counter-attack by the Australian team. Uh, something I think we're going to see a lot more of as this game progresses with England pressing. And, a... and it's a free kick now. We're sure that they'll delay until he gets back into the middle. Two-man wall. Well, Kimball's in some trouble. Oh, that was Boussas with a little bit of... No, Boussas with the win. Mitchell to battle. Mitchell's got the break on Robson here. Can Mitchell pull him back? Nicely stopped there. Mitchell got round young Robson, but only Crosby stopped that one from being a very dangerous cross. And again, they'll pile up at the back with Patikas on the goal line. Kendall holds it. Patikas puts it in, whistle is gone. Kendall obviously fouled there, and there was no real threat to the England goal. He came out to challenge it, three bodies hit him. Patikas rattles it in, but the whistle had gone long before. Wallace has dropped back. Bad pass. Alan a lot busier now with the bits and pieces as Robson comes forward and Patikas the culprit there as Australia pull everyone back even Dave Mitchell is getting behind the ball here well it's a long long way out for a direct shot but it's possible it's out Peak and Webb on the ball. Yes. Webb is Allen now. They're still with a half a chance of getting through here. Wallace can't turn on it, but it's going to be picked up here by Robson and blocked by Wheatley. Wallace battles. Wallace and Australia just keep it out. Yeah. And there's a chance here for Mitchell to break away. Mitchell's away, it's an obvious foul, and a free kick. Mitchell has certainly got away there. Pure power, as the ball was misjudged in the air, he just drove through the middle. That was a bad leap by Banfield, one of the rare misjudgments he's had in this game, and the cross came to fullback and chopped him. So we're back to the free kick situation. We've got a replacement for Australia with this man, Hunter, on. He's wide on the right for the kick. The wall's got to get back farther. They'll stop it us. Oh, it's a brilliant save. It's an absolutely marvellous save. Terrific effort by the goalkeeper there. Well driven. Excellent piece of work by Kendall. Well, a crowd of 28,000 uh, just over here would be horror struck if anything came from this uh, free kick from Neil Webb. It might be the odd isolated pond, but not too many of us. Webb takes it. Well away by Robert Wheatley. Greenall back in again. Wallace. Robson, Small, oh, he's got it. Michael Small has picked up another equaliser. Catch him before he gets out of the stadium. And the big fella, the one big fella they've got up front, catches in. Two players competing for this. After Greenall pumps it intelligently back into the goal mouth. A swing by Wallace, he misses. A swing by Robson, he misses. But Michael Small doesn't. And that's his second goal in two games. Series of errors there by the Australian team. They should have had it away a lot earlier. Good play, though, by 
Greenall, that's a considered ball back in there, he didn't whack it, Wallace should have had a clean shot, Robson, you can excuse him, but Michael Small has really been growing in stature in more ways than one, and it's 1-1. One -one. That draw in fact make England a winner of Group D, with Australia runner-up on goal difference, and the defending champions Argentina on their way home. Certainly one of the surprises of the early part of this tournament, John. Well, I think pre-tournament form, the fact that Argentina didn't make it to the quarter-finals, certainly, but on the form of the four teams in that group, I don't think uh, Argentina can consider themselves unlucky to be eliminated. They weren't uh, in the top two by any means in, yes, in that group. Yes, Germany, they're a very young team given by, by long odds by the Australian public at the start of the competition. But who, for very many people, made this competition so memorable? Young men like Mark Kousis, the highest goal scorer in the competition, Peter Raskopoulos, Paul Kay, David Mitchell, and the exciting discovery, Oscar Crino. All of them emerged as national heroes as they clashed with the European champions, West Germany, in front of a very large crowd at Canberra's Bruce Stadium. John was at shades of 1974 in Germany. Well, very much so, because the whole country was suddenly talking soccer, and had been started by the performance of the young Socceroos who had uh, developed as each game went on. There were the personalities starting to emerge. Uh, young Australian boys like, uh, for example, Paul Kay, who could stand uh, on his own two feet uh, compared with any other player in the tournament. The fact that they're wearing the green and gold, it meant something to them for this big game at the Bruce Stadium. Well, very much so, and it, uh, it was just soccer was suddenly the main topic of conversation in the Australian sporting and uh, public uh, arena. John, before this championship started, an honest appraisal here. Did you think the Australians could go through to the quarterfinal? Well, I felt they had a chance, and I wrote the, the same. I'm not saying that after the event by any means, but I felt that the underdog role uh, suited Australians particularly, and also the fact that they were playing at home. You mentioned Dawn Fraser and Rod Laver earlier in the program. You're talking about guts and determination. That's what it came down to as they went to the Bruce Stadium. Guts and determination, but also temperament on the big occasion. I think these uh, famous Australian sportsmen have had that. And I think we, we saw glimpses of it uh, in our young Socceroos as well. So the green and gold shirts of the Australians was worn with pride at the Bruce Stadium in Canberra for the clash with the European champions of 1981, West Germany. We pick up the action and our commentator is Les Murray. Forward for Rapp, for Cooper. Cooper Hopper is across the channel. The pass is there. Well done. In comes the right foot across. Mitchell. Turned well on to it, Mitchell. Didn't quite find the target. But a good, good counter attack by the Australian. Now it's West Germany. That's good ball out to Wolfhard. Goes past his man in Wheatley. Small cross in, and that's a good looking here. What a fine play. Knows how the man who executed the header. And he's disgusted, but Lederhern can be very, very pleased about himself. In came the cross. Beautifully executed diving header, and look at the reflexes of uh, Ahern here. Peter Raskopoulos. Mitchell. And obstruction from behind from the number three, Schmidt-Kunz, and it's a free kick to, to the Aussies. In Cantalupo, goes down the right flank, and in comes the cross from Raskopoulos. This is Kay. Chip forward. Good ball that was. In Cantalupa. It's right there. Well played. In Cantalupa. Rich his teeth and says, oh, why didn't that go in? And it was really the excellence of this keeper, Rudiger Falborn, that defied the Australians. And the throw had already taken. Here's Credo to Wheatley. Low cross in. And phase three. Australians really take no time to think at all. They just go about their business as if they had an hour to think about it. And that really is what 4K should have done there, is to have a shot. The gate was wide open. Now, Robert Wheatley gallops away here on the right. Crosses in. Roosters was under that. And that'll be a goal kick. It was Roosters' header. Lose it. Forward it goes to Schoen. And finally the ball can go out of play. And Antes will be the man to take it. It'll be an outswinger with the right foot. And well away by Crino. Is Zivas. Up towards Hemp. 
And both fast, and it's off, just off the line. What a given. The referee was beautifully situated for it, right on the byline, away from the left-hand post. But that was very, very close indeed. Look at this. In came the tap. The ball bounced over the keeper. Stephen Blair, man of the moment for the Australians. And a bit of consternation from Les St. Luke and from Raul Blanco. Here's the corner. Well headed away by Kusa. The Australians can come out now, but the Germans will press forward again. Here's Winkelhofer. Now offside. Here's Wolfgang. And across to Schoen. Well tackled, but it's still Germany. Escrive, Schoen. Moore's on his left. Wheatley will come across to challenge. And Moore takes it on. Good right foot across, and that was dangerous. Still in play. Well cracked back in. By Hunter. Powwow in front of the Australian goal. Here comes the throw. Oh, no save off the post. There's that incident again where the Australians escaped just off the post there. Glenahern really didn't know much about it, and the ball was finally clear. Matikas. Restopolis. Using Cantalupa. Good ball, good ball to David Mitchell. And the interception from Schmidtkund rescues the Germans. And again, it's an Australian corner. David Mitchell got away from a beautiful ball from Incan Saluto. And he took his time, measured his cross. And when he made it, the deflection came off Schmidtkund for an Aussie corner. No corner, short one to Rescopolis. And that's well tried, well tried. Keeper and indeed every German in that penalty area, indeed probably every Australian accepted a cross there. And now it's Incantalupo. Oh, goodness. He just had a knock at that ball, just turned the ball on, and that's what gave the goalkeeper his opportunity to save it. That's as close as the Australians have come so far to scoring. Free kick to Australia, but there's the incident again. <laughs> Forward the Australians go. Well crossed in, dangerous. Here's Patikas. Across it goes to Cantalupo, who's free. Well tried. So Fabio Incantalupo threatening it uh, twice in succession and within a minute. But he picked up this ball on the left. He really makes good space for himself with that. And cracked it. And then then it's cut away. Off. Talk again. Mitchell still free on the right. Rostopoulos holds on too long. Here's Wheatley. And that's the way for a corner by Winkelhofer. Cantalupo lofting it in. Headed on by Patikas. Mitchell was there. Finally hooked away by Loza. Forward it goes towards Herbst for number nine. It comes well away by Wheatley. Now three square balls. Moza. So a quick break by the Germans, uh, outnumbering the Australians in that penalty area. Well picked up on this right hand side. As Moza cracked it, and Herbst was the man who booted it well over in the end. Forward towards Zivas. Man intercepting was Prino. 
So the Germans get a throw in about 10 or 12 metres inside the Australian half. There's Scher. Sievers, well across, first time. And the man under it was Steve Blair, and that's the first quarter of the second half to be taken by, uh, to be, uh, to go to West Germany. So the first blood drawn by the Germans. Very casual start to the second period. Not uh, as much gusto as there was at the beginning of the first half. So here's the corner then. Out swinger. Now Sorg tries it. Deflection. And thank you very much to Gladderhorn. Paul Fark was the man who got a foot to it. Ball spun off his foot. And Gladderhorn was there. What a fine corner that. Good looking corner ball bouncing down there to Torx. You had a good crack at it, and then the ball spun off the foot of Wolfhart. And Glenahern said, Thank you. <laughs> uh, here come the Australians for a good play. David Mitchell out on his left is Grant Lee, but he's caught in the up the other end, much the same distance as that free kick uh, that the Germans took. What a good run by David Mitchell. A push and shove there from Antes and Schoen, and he's brought down, and the referee has no doubt that that's a free kick. Five-man wall up for the Germans. A good ten metres away from the kicker, as it should be. And it'll be Raskopoulos. Crino's there. So is Lee, and so is Kane. Raskopoulos lobbing it towards Mitchell. Down by Torek, and away by three. Across it goes to Kane. Challenge coming from Volkart. This is Ziva, trying to steal it from Crino. And the Australians can break again. Here's Paul Kane. Inside him on his left is Patikas. Kane again. Patikas is through the gap. That's a lovely ball. Good work by the keeper. Here's Patikas, the man foiled. To Australia. Good work by the Australians. Paul Kay was the man who made it. Look at the way he whips inside his man here and then on the blind side puts it into the gap. Perfectly waited for Jim Patikas. And by the time Patikas to pick the ball up, the goalkeeper's there to turn it. Here comes the corner. And it's found out and in fact off Grant Lee for a West German free kick. A very promising attack there by the Australians. Fast, determined, and intelligent, Tom. Yes, Patikas, they certainly got the ball from Kay, but he ran into the space, and before Kay passed it, was it Patikas said, put it there, and he did. And here's West Germany. Forward it goes towards Heps. And now the West Germans break on that left flank. Well fast and well taken by the two passes. No problems at all for Glenahern as the Germans got away through Wolfart on that left-hand side. He measured his cross. He had plenty of time and space to do it, but well taken by the keeper. So 11 minutes gone in the second half. Still no score in this quarter-final. And that's out of play. Clash between Wheatley and the number 11 Wolfart. So Wolfart is down as he gives himself plenty of time to recover and the free kick free kicks being given and it comes from Zivas and safely behind the line by Howard Chudinik and Chudinik explains to Glenn Wheatley that he had no choice there and in comes the corner from Antes, the number 8 up goes Wheatley, no he doesn't Oh. Wheatley changed his mind. He was coming out to go up for the ball. On the left is three, the number five. Inside, Loza. He's robbed by Kay. That's Patikas losing out. And rescued by Glenn Wheatley. He's Australia. Robert Wheatley. In fact, and but the Germans do get a corner out of it. Uh, a little bit of danger for the Australians as the West German coach 
Dietrich Weiser on the left of your picture, now with a slight hint of a smile on his face, looks at the opportunities here. And yeah, that's a good header down, and oh, very, very close. Raskopoulos and the keeper combining finally off the line. Very, very close save from that corner. So that's as close as the Germans have uh, come to scoring, but it's the Australians who break again. Here's Grant Lee. Oh, it's a Mitchell, it's a space, but he ran the keeper. Goodness me, David Mitchell, he should have gone around that keeper. How close did the Germans come there to conceding a goal? It's the Germans to break on the counter-attack. Here's Antes for the shot. Well played. There are fireworks on either side now. Mitchell. Oh, that's given away to Mitchell. Bad ball. Persis is there as well. And neatly rescued on the German side shot. Germans breaking here again. Herbst knocks it in. And it's there. The Germans are leading. The Germans are leading. West Germany in the lead. So a stunned gallery here at the Bruce Stadium. The first goal going to the Germans. 25 minutes into the second half. Good cross in. And there is the header down. And Okay. Not well forward towards the kickoff. It's out. Penalty scoring. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Penalty to Australia. And the Australian bench is elated. Les Cyclug was, I think, ready to go to that pitch and tell the referee just what he thought of that. That the referee was dead right. At that instant when the referee blew the whistle, I was overjoyed. I couldn't believe we'd got a penalty in the chance to equalise. Um, I was very confident I could put it away. I went up, I picked up the ball and put it on the spot. There was a slight delay and the referee was clearing the box. And um, I was almost certain that the ball was in the back of the net. But um, I hit it, the keeper went down, saved it. And um, I just went blank. To take the kick. And what a moment this is in Mark Dusis' life. And he takes it too softly. Goodness me, Tom McCain. He tried That's to place it, he didn't hammer it, he tried to place it, but now, I think, that surely now. is the, Yes, Tom, it surely is the sign of nerves. And this is where Australia's inexperience against top opposition pays the price. Robert Wheatley in. Mitchell, too fast! Mitchell again! Nice and successful. Holborn is the hero for the West Germans. And a very disappointed David Mitchell. Good cross in here. That brought the danger to the German goal. Head of first time in. Saved here by the goalkeeper as he punches it out. And then the rebound is taken by Mitchell. And look at the keeper here. Takes it beautifully as the Australians gather in the penalty area for this throw. Robert Wheatley takes it, the short one. Wheatley again, first time cross in. Up goes the keeper, he missed it, and the whistle goes. The whistle goes for a foul on the keeper. Rudy Gutendorf spotted me scoring the goal against South Melbourne at the sports ground, and um, from then on, he, um, he put me in, into the line on this side and um, I decided to give up university and um, since the beginning of this year it's been full-time soccer just for this championship. So Australia falls again, free kick given to the Germans. Save Germany, but that's what he's there for and the Germans so cool in defence, so cool. And there indeed is the final whistle, the whistle to end the match and there is the end of Australian trek in this 1981 World Youth Championship. I'm sure that all of the fans here and at home will agree with me that the Australians were unlucky today. At least they deserve, would have deserved a draw. So West Germany through to the semi-finals, the end of the road for Australia, John, that they did us proud.
Well, they only lost the match. They certainly didn't lose any friends and uh, a tremendous boost uh, for soccer in Australia.